one sat alone beside the highway begging his eyes were blind the light he could not see he clutched his old rags and shivered in the shadows then jesus came and bad his darkness flee when jesus comes it's time again for the family altar program with evangelist lester roloff when jesus comes all the tears are dried away and here now is brother roloff and fills the life with glory for all is changed when jesus comes to stay now then it's time for the message and i want to speak today on how to keep from stumbling now most alcoholics stumble and I just say in the beginning of my message, one of the best ways to keep from stumbling is quit drinking. Because if you start drinking, you're going to start stumbling. You know that. Now, the one step, I mean, the one experience that always takes place just before you fall is stumble. Nearly everybody stumbles before they fall. Isn't that right? It's just easy to see. Somebody said, well, I, I started stumbling and down I went. And that's it. Now, I got my Bible down and uh, in my uh, devotional time and began to read what the Bible has to say about stumbling. And um, I read about a man that didn't stumble. I mean, he didn't stagger at all. Now, you know one of the characteristics of a drunkard is staggering. He begins to stagger because he loses coordination. I mean, his, his, the first thing about a man, it's not stumbling legs, it's a stumbling brain. So you stumble upstairs before you stumble downstairs. Amen? I mean, you've got to stumble in your brain, and then you lose your coordination, see? And, and, and then uh, th things... Actually, what's taken is your brain's refusing to function. I mean, it's, it's, it, it's going crazy up there. And you, you're not thinking straight, and, and you can't, when you can't think straight, you can't walk straight. And so uh, the Bible talks about stumbling. And uh, there's, a, there's a wonderful text uh, in this old book about... Uh, this business of stumbling, but I want you to turn. We're going to find a number of passages, and then uh, we'll bring the message. I used to sing in our little country church when I joined the booster band. Booster, booster, be a booster. That's the tune, you know, as the words. Booster, booster, be a booster. And uh, our one little boy was singing one day out loud. He said, rooster, rooster, be a rooster. He brought off the farm. All he knew was the chickenology. And he was, he thought this all in rooster, rooster, but it's being booster, see? And so I think we got too many roosters in him. I mean, we've got a bunch of people going to roost, huh? And uh, I hope, I really hope that everybody that get the victory and get a blessing, or if, if you, if you realize that people could get a blessing, you ought to get somebody to be a booster. And the days are brighter down ahead. You watch and see. You know, my imagination runs away with me sometimes. But it's a, I think a good imagination's healthy. Oh, yeah. I'd hate to be without one, I'll tell you that. I'll guarantee you, I, I tell you, I, I imagine a lot of things. But the Bible says, the Bible says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can think. All he can what? Yes. Think about that. Well, I can sure think some big ones. <laughs> I mean, I, my, my thinkers are bigger. Yeah. And so here's what I got thinking. What if 5,000 people were just to decide that we're going to be a booster? I don't care if it's Minneapolis, Minnesota. See, yeah. that's right. I tell you, folks, uh, they, we, just, we just need to really get after it now, and it'll be a blessing. Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 7. I'm glad you know that my treasure is not buried where I'll be. I can't find it. Yeah. I know where it is. Yeah. I mean, I got the name and address. Know exactly. It's in the. It's in the big strong vault up yonder, and that's what the Bible told us to do with it. All right, uh, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 28 and verse 7. But they also have erred through wine and through strong drink, or out of the way, the priest and the prophet have erred through strong drink. That's bad. And you know we're going through that again? Did you know? I'm sorry to say it. 
but so-called clergymen, not preachers, but clergymen, uh, they drink and they endorse strong drink and endorse liquor drinking. I can't imagine a preacher called himself a man of God that had ever touched anything like that. But he, he told me it right there. He said the priest and the prophet heard through strong drink. They're swallowed up of wine. They're out of the way through strong drink. They earn vision. They stumble in judgment. All right. Now then, the thing that make a man stumble is to have a bad vision. Now, the drinking liquor will give you a bad vision. You can't see straight. I mean, you can't see straight. You can't operate. And you can't do what you ought to do for the Lord uh, as long as you can't see. We used to get up to the bat, Denzel, and uh, one of our sayings was, How can he hit it when he can't see it? You know, you ever heard that? <laughs> In other words, put the fastball to him. The devil's got a pretty fastball. Yeah. Yeah. He really has. But I tell you one thing, when you got 20-20 spiritual Bible vision, just put her down. You'll see it. And you'll be able. And then another thing, I found this out. The best way in the world for me to score is to let Jesus take my last strike. Yeah. Yeah. And any time he comes to bat, I mean, I'm fixing to make a score. All right, uh, let's turn to First Peter. No, we'll stop at First Chronicles. Back up a little bit. First Chronicles, chapter 13 and verse 9. This is an interesting thing, how something stumbled. Verse 9, 13, 9. And when they came under the threshing floor of Chidon, Uzzah put forth his hand to hold the ark, for the oxen stumbled. Now, here's the picture. They were, they were bringing the ark. Now, the ark represented the presence of God. And they had some old oxen hooked up to a cart, and on the cart was the, was the, uh, the ark, and they were bringing the ark home to the people of God. The ark had been out of place, and so had the people. They drifted in idolatry, and they were in trouble. And when the people were separated from the ark, they were defeated, and they were in idolatry, and uh, they were humiliated and in shame. And so they said, we better go get the ark and bring it home. And so the ark is on its way. And I'll tell you something else. When the ark was in the land of the heathens, it, didn't, it wasn't a blessing to the heathens either, because the heathens didn't honor the one that ark stood for. And so the heathen said, listen, man, we've got to get rid of the ark. I mean, it, we can all be dead. I mean, every plague you can think about is hitting us, and we'd like to get rid of this ark. And the ark belongs with the people of God. God runs with his own people, and we ought to run with him and run with his people. And we ought not to be around the devil's crowd. And so the ark's on its way home, and so Uzzah looked up, and the old oxen, they stumbled, and the old ark began to... I maybe trembled just a little bit, so he decided he better stay to the ark. And he reached up, and when he did, God smote him and said, Listen, boy, that's a lesson for you and me to learn. We don't need to prop God up. I mean, we're the ones that do the stumbling. It'd have been all right if you'd have gone over and maybe propped up the old oxen. But I mean, when he put his hand on that ark and said... Uh, uh, Lord, I'll help you along. He said, I don't need any help. Wham! And down he went. He's dead. And folks, we need to realize that there's something holding. I like that. Isaiah said, I saw the Lord. High and lifted up. I tell you, makes me want to bow my head, pull off my shoes and uncover my head. When I, when I think about Jesus, high and holy, I know that little song we sang the other day. I don't have a friend like the lowly. I like the holy Jesus. I like to say it, the holy Jesus. And he understands all my struggles and so forth. But anyhow, those are reached up. Now, the oxen stumbled, but God didn't stumble. God never stumbled. Let's see if we can find another verse. Found in the 27th Psalm, Psalm 27. You know, I saw something in this a little plainer even though I've known it, but I was reminded of it. It's the 27th Psalm. I hope you'll memorize these 14 verses. I just wish everybody would memorize this Psalm. This is absolutely... Well, he said, The Lord's my light, he's my salvation, whom shall I fear? Most of us live in fear because we don't have the light and the salvation of the Lord. He said, The Lord's the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? How in the world could anybody fail or be afraid of falling or stumbling if the Lord was their strength? He's got all the strength. And so he said, When the wicked... That's who it is. When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my what? 
Uh huh. That's what the devil thrives on. That's, he's just got appetite for the flesh. He didn't come up to eat up on my soul or eat up. He can't get to my soul. My enemy will never get to my soul. My soul hid with Christ in God. All he can do is chew on my flesh. <laughs> if he gets that, he won't have much in there. I think it'll nauseate him before it's over. <laughs> you watch him. I, I don't mean to be ugly or crude or rude, but my prediction is it'll make the old boy vomit if he eats too much of it. Yeah. I know it's too rotten. I know that in me that is in my flesh that dwells no good thing. Right. And listen, you know what the enemy wants? The enemy wants my flesh. Yes. That's all. They don't have an appetite for nothing except the flesh. <laughs> Just want the flesh. Now, you'd, you'd say, well, Brother Olaf, I'd like to have your bill full of gun thing in it. Is that right? That's the flesh. You know what you want with it? You want to go somewhere and buy some cigarettes and get some liquor? Or you want to get you a new dress? Or you want to get a new suit? I mean, that's for the flesh. See? You'd say, I'll tell you what I'd like to have. I'd like to go up and kill one of them yearlings and eat one of them hindquarters. That's the flesh. See? People steal a yearling. You know why they steal a yearling? They want to sell it and get something for the flesh. When the enemy came upon me, when the wicked, even my enemy, when he came upon me, he stumbled and fell. That's good. He stumbled and fell. He didn't make it at all. Folks, don't you realize that the enemies that they had back in the Old Testament, they're still ours today. Mm -hmm. The enemies. Did you know the Bible tells me uh, over there he said he'd stagger like a drunk man? He'd stumble like a drunk man? I mean, they staggered when they drank over there. They st stumbled just like they do now. I mean, the flesh hadn't changed. It's just the same thing it's always been. Uh, Cain killed a man. He killed his brother. Uh, but he was a murderer. And uh, people still kill folks today. And so he said, when they came upon me, when they came upon me, my, the wicked, even my enemies, and my foes, they came upon me, eat up my flesh. They stumbled and fell. Now, verse 3, though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war should rise against me. In this will I be confident. One thing, one thing. Oh, when you get it narrowed down to one thing. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord. That's number one. And then what did he say? And inquire in his temple. Before I want to ask any question at all, I just want to see the beauty of the Lord. I mean, I want to just sit and behold the beauty of the Lord. I've never seen anybody like the Lord. I've never seen anybody that will compare with the Lord. Never have. I mean, He's just so different. He's perfect in His love, His compassion. And so, He said, when I get there, uh, just in the, in the Lord's house, He said, in the house of the Lord, I'm going to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty. I'm going to look at the beauty of the Lord. You know... That's the reason I don't understand. I just say it again. I know it so many times it comes to me, and I have to. I don't understand why people could see so much television when there's no beauty of the Lord in it. I mean, there's no beauty of the Lord. I'm not looking. What are you looking at, the beauty of the Lord? No, you're not. You're looking at the flesh. You're looking at some old silly advertisement. You're listening to some old heathen as he talks, and... You know, the thing that, that television does, it takes the real and makes it false. And then takes the false and makes it real. It reverses everything. I mean, it calls good evil and evil good. And that's exactly what Isaiah was talking about. Oh, if somehow God's people could just see the false and the phony... And they're not much real uh, around here. And so, uh, let's go to another verse. Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9. We're going to find our text in the book of Romans, but this is not it. But uh, we will read chapter 9. 
This is a great passage that has to do uh, with people stumbling, and this is the cause of it. I'm going to begin reading at uh, verse 30. What shall we say then? Romans 9, 30. What shall we say then? That the Gentiles, which followed not after righteousness, have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore? Why? Because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. For they stumble at that stumbling stone, as it is written. I'm going to quote now the Word of God. He said, Behold, a land sign, a stumbling stone, and rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Now, really, the main reason people stumble is that they stumble at the stumbling stone. Yes. If you'll ever stand straight and put your feet on that solid rock, your stumbling days will be over. Amen. And so he said here, they're stumbling. I lay in Zion, a stumbling stone, rock of offense. Whosoever believeth on it, no, no. Him, that's Jesus he's talking about. People still stumbling over him today. They don't believe on him at all. Most people never mention Jesus. Turn to Romans uh, chapter 14 and verse 21. Romans 14, verse 21. It's good neither to eat flesh, nor to drink wine or anything, whereby thy brother stumbleth, or is offended, or is made weak. You know what Paul said one day? He said... If eating meat would make my brother to stumble, I'll be delighted to become a vegetarian. I mean, I'll never eat another bite of meat as long as I live. I mean, if it's going to make my brother to stumble. Now, what he's saying is simply this. Let's not do anything to cause somebody to doubt Christ and to uh, be discouraged or weary. You know, I think we have people once in a while that they just can tankers and cross and keep everything stirred up and upset. I mean, just fuss and write, wake up fussing, go to bed fussing. Yeah. Nothing pleases. And uh, nothing is going to suit anybody. Now then, uh, he said they stumble at the stumbling stone. He said, I'm not going to eat anything that will cause my brother. Now, listen. That means if a man comes and he bootlegs a cigarette off of a this or something and passes it to another, he caused him to stumble right there. I mean, that's the way we ought to interpret these things. And when God speaks to you and tells you to be obedient about something, then don't uh, pull back at it. Just go ahead and say, Lord, I'll be glad to walk. Now turn to John uh, chapter 11, verse 9. How am I going to keep them stumbling? I don't want to stumble. I, and you know good and well I'd have to admit that I've stumbled. Uh, John chapter 11 and verse 9. John chapter 11 and verse 9. Now Jesus said, I won't tell you how you can keep from stumbling. Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there's no light in him. There's no light in him. Now, what's the secret of walking and keeping from stumbling? Just stay in the light. Keep your light on. The Bible said if we walk in the light, uh, John, First John chapter 1, he said if we walk in the light, as he's in the light, we have fellowship. Fellowship. I left Atlanta after a wonderful time of fellowship. And uh, there was one thing that got me to the city, and it was the light. I was driving along, uh, dimming the lights, you know, and putting them on bright and dimming them. And, and I just thought, I got thinking, what, what if this switch would go out on me? You know what we do? Just had to pull over to the side of the road, knock on somebody's door, call said, send for me. My light's gone out. 
Now, if I did, of course, I could be a, you know, I could be very foolish. I said, light or no light, I'm going on. I hope I'll hit the road or stay in it. I mean, I'm just going to back her ears and throw the foot feet on the floor and I'm gone. Yeah, that's right. But I tell you, I wouldn't be standing here preaching. Why? Because I'd stumble. Hmm. And so would that car. And the insurance man would be on his way out. And maybe the undertaker. But I tell you what. I just believe that God's people ought to have enough sense to turn on the light. Amen. Now, how in the world are y'all going to keep from stumbling if you don't get the light in your soul? And this is the word of God. The instant thy word give his light, thy word's a lamp to my feet, a light to my pathway. And you're never going to have the light until you get in the Word of God. Amen. Yes. And I tell you, if you don't memorize the Bible and stay with the Word of God and read it and love it, you ought to love it more than you love food. And Job said, I have esteemed thy Word more than my necessary food. We're not going to ever quit stumbling until we learn how to walk in the blessed Word of God. Now you're ready for the text. We've just... Uh, Circled around it, but we're going after it now. Oh, he was a great man. He was a tremendous man. I tell you, uh, this is a man that took some big steps. I want you to know he climbed some tall mountains. I mean, he got over some big hills. I mean, he really, and he attained, he attained uh, the greatest name, I suppose, of any man in the Old Testament. I mean, actually. Now, I know John was the beloved that Jesus loved. Of course, he loved all of them, but he was such a lovable fellow. John was... A, but in the Old Testament, there was a man. And you know, the, one of the strange things is he was a wealthy man. He really was. And God called him. And uh, I want you to turn with me to uh, Romans chapter 4. And I want to see how we can keep from stumbling now. Romans chapter 4. What is it that makes a man stumble? Now, if you were to start off in the fourth chapter, we better read those first four or five verses uh, because you'll find out where he got it and how it happened to him. And the thing about it is, it was a long, long time before this was ever penned or written down. See, this is in the New Testament. Uh, this happens to come to be about the sixth book of the New Testament, you see. But all the Old Testament had to unfold and the men had to live. Abraham had to live. And now, he didn't know, but his life was being recorded. And many of the things he said and his experiences with Sarah and all the way from Ur of the Chaldees. You know, one of the reasons that he didn't stumble or he didn't fall... He obeyed God, and God said, Now listen, I know Abraham's going to command his children after him. I know he's going to tell them what to do. He's going to give the command to them. And I believe that's what we need to do with our children. Command them. Command them. I tell you, my daddy did that. He didn't know a lot about the Bible, but he had enough sense to command me. And I'm glad that he made me feel better when I obeyed his commandment. We are delighted that you joined us today for the Family Altar Program with Evangelist Lester Roloff and the message... How to Keep from Stumbling Now to receive this message on a CD, ask for offer number RO2657 2657 And to help us cover shipping and handling, we ask for a gift of at least $10. And we'd like to have the call letters to this radio station and also today's date. Our address is the Roloff Evangelistic Enterprises, Post Office Box 1177, Corpus Christi, Texas, 78403. And to use your credit card, dial toll-free 1-800-772-7507. We are offering a message this month by Brother Woloff, How Much of the Bible. He preached this message to a group of young men in San Antonio when visiting the academy. He speaks of how the Bible affects people's lives. When requesting the CD, ask for offer number RO1768 and include $10 to help us cover shipping and handling. Now, to use your credit card, dial toll-free at 1-800-772-7507 
or write us at the Roloff Evangelistic Enterprises, Post Office Box 1177, Corpus Christi, Texas, 78403. Again, the offer is a message by Brother Roloff called, How Much of the Bible? Offer number RO1768. Write to the Roloff Evangelistic Enterprises, Post Office Box 1177, Corpus Christi, Texas, 78403. And to use your credit card, dial toll-free at 1-800-772-7507. This is Gene Price looking forward to being with you again here on the Family Altar Program. The strangers to God, His grace and His love, were gathered by blue Galilee to listen with joy to words from the lips of the stranger who sat by the sea. They came and they were blessed. He gave the weary rest. He made the blinded eyes to see. He fed the hungry soul and he made the wounded whole by the waters of Blue Galilee. They sat at his feet and they looked in his face, content in his presence to be, for no one before had cared for their souls like the stranger who sat by the sea. They came and they were blessed He gave the weary rest He made the blinded eyes to see He fed the hungry soul And he made the wounded whole By the waters of Blue Galilee 